Hi, welcome along. This is Outdoor Gear Chat. We're recording episode 43. There's a kit list for Mountain Goat Circuit. I'll let you pronounce the Welsh version of that, Cathy, in a, in a moment. I'm joined, as always, by Cathy. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, Wayne. Uh, yeah, I'm Cathy, uh, owner and director of the Joe Brown Shops in Snowdonia and also the Climber Shop in Ambleside. Uh, I have been practicing again this morning because it's been a little while but uh, the mountain goat circuit is uh, in Welsh, pronounced Kilfdaichiraveveneth. So I'm hoping I haven't just upset all of our Welsh speaking staff. <laughs> You get a round of applause for me on that one. I, I started learning Welsh a couple of years ago and a bit of yeah, find, finding it hard. I'll say that much through Duolingo. So, yeah, well done. <laughs> so with us today, Wayne, um, we have Chris van der Hoven, who is head of global sales operations at RAB, um, who's actually been really important in helping us create the Mountain Goat Circuit, and uh, which is a 50 kilometre high level uh, route running from our Kapilkirig shop across the mountains to our Clumbera shop and returning back to Kapilkirig on the other side of the valley. So it's almost like a skyline route, which uh, covers all sorts of terrain. We'll go into that uh, as, as we describe further. But it's uh, an absolutely stunning circuit that's guaranteed to give you probably all weather in, uh, in one hit. But uh, welcome, Chris. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, Cathy. Uh, nice to meet you, Wayne. Well, thanks for Likewise. inviting me along to this. Um, yeah, I guess to start where this all came from. So me and my team have uh, been working with the Joe Brown's team for some quite some years. Um, so I've been very, very familiar with the business, the shops, the staff, and really, really importantly, all their local terrain. Visiting Kathy and her team, what, probably 15 years ago as their account manager, uh, had the privilege of spending many evenings in the Welsh Hills, um, having evenings to myself, going out climbing with their staff, I mean, going out running with their staff, um, and became very, very familiar with quite a few of the mountain ranges um, and the areas that this route takes in. And in the recent years, we started talking about, you know, how, how we could create a route, but really, really importantly, creating a route for everybody not just runners rab the mountain people um we're a, a, a brand for everybody who enjoys the hills so it's trying to encompass that ethos into this route which is exactly the same as joe brown's so the conversation just escalated really really quickly and that's what the mountain goat circuit is all about it is a route for absolutely everybody if you want to run it you can if you want to fast pack fast hike you can if you want to trek and hike and camp or stop at various accommodation uh, locations on route, also you can do that as well. Yeah, it's I've a fantastic got... route literally for everybody. And it's really important, Chris, you just said how inclusive it is. It's something that was really important to us when we came up with the route that uh, there's obviously a, a, a key history of trail running in the area. But there's also a, a huge history of mountaineering in the area and, and training and, and for big expeditions, even Everest. So there is every opportunity to, to put load up your backpack and do this over two, maybe even three days because of the route we've chosen. There's lots of accommodation options on route. And the whole lot sort of ethos is to respect the environment and also to give back to um, the Snowdonia National Park. There's a huge number of events that come in and bring their own food and um, uh, wagons and, and their own sales uh, stalls. And there's very little positive financial impact on uh, the local area. Um, so this is very much about immersing yourself. If you want to run it, fantastic. What an achievement. But also you can take accommodation. You can take in the stunning scenery, the unique alpine plants that are in the area. And of course, you're almost certainly going to see some of the mountain goats that live in the region as well. And, and they cool. are something to behold, especially when the little kids are about as well, because they're desperately cute. <laughs> No, while, you, while you're talking, I've got lost in OS maps and looking at the routes <laughs> as well. <laughs> so, uh, where, where did it start? Which does it matter which way around you go? Did you say it starts a couple and then Clumberis or no? Or it does doesn't it matter, actually really? matter which way around you go. Uh, I've done it. I have all of my little maps here because I uh, I did ended up doing the first half actually. I set out to fast pack the whole whole route and I took a full bivy kit with me. Um, but actually, after the first day, I was jiggered. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is a big 
route. There's a lot. I yeah. think the, the whole route, there's 3,800 metres of ascent. fair portion of that is in the first day uh, because you're starting from Kapilkirik, you're going up Mol Shabod and then down to Penny Gurid, um right. Hotel and to Penny Pass and then up and over Pluith. Yeah. Um, and then you think, oh, great, that's Lewis done, just Snowden to go. And you and you look up from the saddle to Snowden. And I can't tell you how many times I've climbed Snowden, but um, I, I'm sure it's grown since the time <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Because I just stood there and looked down and thought, oh, God, that's miles. <laughs> um, but the route down off of Snowden takes in Malkin So you go over the top of Cloggy and then over Malkin Gorian. And you, there's just a glorious grassy trail if you're running mm. off of Malkingorian and then down into Clamberis. After that, uh, you well, the shop is a checkpoint, actually. So you can just pop into the shop or you, if it's open um, or if you've got uh, your Strava running, um, that obviously shows the checkpoint. And then you go up through the quarries. So you've got all of that um, human geography and history that you're going up through. As yeah, well. I love that in that area. Oh. Like the slate, the slate mines, the slate yeah. museum area is just fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's so like atmospheric, and it's, oh, especially different really weather is. brings different stuff there, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really is. And and actually, just in that section, there's one point you can stand and you're looking down at Mel- medieval Dolbadan Castle. You're looking at Klimpadan as a ribbon lake. You've got all the mm. geology of Snowdon, assuming the clouds high. Um, but then you're yeah. standing in this um, Victorian slate quarry with all of yeah. the buildings and all of the history and 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 old workings there rusting yeah. away. But you're actually standing on top of a, a 20th century hydroelectric power station that can kickstart the entire national grid, you know. So yeah. you, it's all happening. It's Phenomenal. all going on. Um, and then you go up onto Illidabawa, across Igarn, down through the Glidders um, and along Kepney Capel, which is just beautifully quiet. It's an area actually I've, I've never been to. And uh, and down back to the Capel shop. And I think that's one of the, the key things is this this almost certainly going to take you to somewhere that you haven't been to before in what is, you know, a very, very popular national park. Yeah. That's the bit that um, I like the most about it because getting up on top of the peaks, there's kind of the, the, the normal way of getting up, which is very familiar. Uh, and the route does take some of the less traveled paths. Um, so again, if someone's really, really familiar with the area, it's a great route to take just getting up the mountain in a different way mm. you have a whole different perspective on what was quite familiar and if you run it chris have you i've run parts of it i haven't run the route yeah. yet i'm planning to do it this year with some colleagues for sure um but i've i've run many of the sections yeah uh, yeah yeah we've yeah. had um two of our staff actually use half of it as their commute to and from work and actually we'll have a just a fantastic film um it's just in the final editing stages now but that's going to be available um in the next few weeks and, uh, and that just outlines how rooted i think it's fair to say even though it's a new route that we've just come up with it is absolutely rooted within our staff within the shops within the area and uh, it gives a real flavor of uh, uh, of the importance of of the the region to our to our staff and both our welsh staff and also our english staff that have moved into mm. the area you know um, well, i guess in mountain running or mountain walking I guess, I guess as well yeah. based on what you've both said those that that sort of route and uh, yeah that that area it, yeah like i said it's, it'll be familiar to all sorts of people i guess won't yeah. it? And, yeah. and climbers as well i guess yeah yeah. yeah 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 very much so yeah yeah although if you find yourself climbing on this route you're you need to check your navigation is it all oh, right yeah 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 okay it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's certainly that the, the summits and 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 the surrounding areas will be very familiar to yeah. a lot of the climbers yeah yeah cool and then kit, kit wise then like yeah because we, we always love talking about kit and uh what, what yeah what what's the best sort of kit to be taken I mean, we've had similar conversations on other on other uh, episodes, haven't we, about Welsh, Scottish, Lake District weather? But what, yeah, what would you be recommending t- you take along with you? Um, shall I take this one, Cathy? I can take this one, no problem. Um, along with all the information that we'll be publishing at the launch, there'll be kit lists, uh, three kit lists that might have actually just grown to four kit lists actually um to help people choose what they want to take with them so we'll have a, a running kit list which we'll go through with chris in a moment because yep. there's the, some of the right. products uh in their skyline range are absolutely I- ideal for this 
We've also got a kit list for fast packers um, and that includes weight of items as well. Um, so if you're really wanting to drill down the kit that you're taking, that just gives a, a, a really good selection. And, uh, and then we've got a summer backpacking and then a winter backpacking kit list as well because you're going to need some really serious kit if you're planning to go out in the winter and mm. um, you're going you're gonna to need some really full-on kit with you on that so there'll be those four available certainly for running Chris I know you're a, an avid runner yourself been closely involved with the Skyline range as it's um, been developed and, and come yeah. to market um, I love um, my Kinetic Ultra waterproof and my Phantom <laughs> one of my trousers. favorites too yeah. yeah yeah good to hear yeah the phantom trousers in particular i think they're one of the lightest available 79 um, grams yeah yeah i wish i bought mine in actually because they go into like this little packet that's it's a little pocket inside and they they go right down literally to, to yeah. like about that size they are wincy but uh super light and really really comfy to wear it's, it's dead interesting that I, I i speak to so many people about things folding into the pockets of things so jackets you know the the, the yeah that some of the some of the designs are the, the design to pack into the the pocket aren't they and that, mm -hmm. i'm guessing that that's what you're saying there is it is it just yeah. it folds into itself but it seems to blow a lot of people's minds really, that that that's part of the design it's phenomenal yeah. isn't it it's quite a, but, quite a simple thing to achieve in the design process says the salesman who's not a designer but <laughs> um, <laughs> It's kind of there's 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 two ways that there's sorry there's two reasons why we're starting to develop products like that is one we always lose our stuff sack yeah, um, yeah. or there's a risk of the stuff sack blowing away in the wind yeah. so if you've got this pocket that attach it eliminates those two risks and then also for trying to make ourselves more sustainable is using less fabric within the process so actually using a pocket bag for example that would be in a product anyway if you can convert that into a multi-use thing you are using uh, less fabric and obviously less production um which is which is a good thing yeah definitely um so you've got like the, the phantom there's a phantom pullover as well actually to match the super lightweight trousers which if you if you lift them up you couldn't you wouldn't believe they're waterproof but they are fully taped so they're going to yeah. cover if any kind of race event that you're doing as well if you if yeah. you're needing to carry ultralight waterproofs but the kinetic ultra jacket is just that little bit heavier then this is purely personal for me because I'm not a fast runner. I'm a I'm a plodder. Um, so I like to have plenty of protection from the weather and particularly just that stiffened hood in standard Welsh <laughs> sideways rain um, just gives that added protection, which um, which I, I, I really like. Um, and there's a really little it is small, but it's a very handy pocket on the shoulder, on the um, upper arm as well. It's not quite phone size, but um, there's all sorts of little bits that you can pop in there mostly so the reason why we put that pocket on there is first it's, it's quite easy to get to yeah um, but what we found is because the the sleeves are a little bit of a slimmer fit because it's more designed for running or fast-paced mm. activities you get much more minimal bounce there yeah. than a pocket that would be here yeah or some running jackets are down on the lower lumbar yeah um, and of course if you're wearing a backpack uh, or a belt pack then that pocket is in the way so yeah, yeah here uh, that's the reasons why yeah. yeah were you just talking about snacks then kathy i was oh i, oh, going, yeah, I, going into I know i'm not yeah I know they're that, a very important yeah. part of my running actually exactly i know yeah. that's so that's what i was just picking up on yeah and then yeah you've got you, you've got the the range of uh lightweight packs as well i was uh, seeing so the yeah the the tensor 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 packs in various sizes from five liters upwards as well designed for this purpose i suppose are they yeah, man, there's no reasons why you couldn't use a tensor. Now, the tensor packs, they only go up to a 20 litre. And I would say anybody who's trying to do this full route, it probably is not going to be big enough. Or yeah, I would say there's better fitting packs in our range. And there's various different packs that you can use. Um, so if you were going to run the route, then we've got our running vests, which mm -hmm. without a doubt is the thing that I would recommend. And the best thing about a running vest it fits to you really, really securely. So the minimal bounce, which is obviously very comfortable when you're jumping around, especially on very uneven terrain like this route will be. Um, so we've got two vests, one in a six litre, and we're launching a 12 litre this month, actually. It will go into the shops anytime soon. 
the 12 litre was is the one that I would recommend for this route if you were running. It just allows you to take more kit with you, potentially for safety reasons or someone like me who needs a lot of fuel, um, you can get additional fuel in there. So that's the the, the backpack, let's say, that I would ad- advise a runner to look at. Um, certainly from a fast packing point of view, I would definitely recommend one of our new Buon packs. And I think Kathy has been testing one for us. Yes, it's um, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of the muon is trying to encompass a fit of a a running vest, so something very very close fitting. Having the storage options on the on the harness at the front, which is really convenient when you're still moving quite quickly, but it's a it's a proper pack that really really trying to focus on weight reduction um, and lots and lots of external storage. So again, if you're trying to move quickly or if you are moving quickly external storage on a pack just is so much more convenient than taking your pack off diving into the main compartment so fast packing definitely the muons and also potentially our aeon ultras as well the aeon ultra um, will go up to a 28 liter where the muon would go up to a 50 liter so the muons are a 40 or a 50 liter and the aeon ultras are a 20 or 28 liter where you would use an Aeon Ultra, I would say, is somebody who is really taking a very, very lightweight, fast and light approach to something. So taking the lightest, the the packable equipment with them and doing it in a fast single push where the Muon, without a doubt, is good for somebody like that. But for somebody who may be bivying overnight or just wants to take uh, a bigger picnic with them potentially warm it's, a sleeping it's, it's... bag sorry yeah oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that was my reasoning but yeah. the the mu one i'm pretty sure having checked i'm uh, fairly safe to say it's the only sub one kilo technical pack for women certainly the yep. uh, the nd version and it is it is magnificently comfortable it's now my go-to pack and it does mean whereas before I was cramming everything into a like a 35 litre I've just got that bit of extra space I don't have to be quite so regimented and I can carry my bigger sleeping bag which is really important. And I think that's a really key point about the muons they come in a female specific fit and we identify that with ND which means narrow dimensions and the main difference between a female specific pack and a standard fitting pack is firstly the harness shape that contours to a female form more appropriately and the lumbar which is kind of the big padded cell at the base of the the back system actually uh generally speaking a female's back length is shorter than a man's back length so the lumbar um which sits into the 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 small of your back is higher up and what that allows the pack to do is fit onto the back much more securely um which gives you a much more comfortable fit over a longer duration and so there's stabi- that stability kind of... as well then sorry sorry no, yeah completely. as well isn't yeah. it yeah yeah absolutely and yeah having had i'm six foot six so yeah i've got long back so having had loads of different packs over the years and they've all they've all been really high up on my shoulders and then caused like loads of neck issues as well so yeah. they had the, you know that weight hasn't been I guess that that cantilever he says doing a weird angly thing with his hands is is yeah. isn't it wasn't yeah it wasn't on my lower back. So it yeah. makes a huge difference. It really does. Absolutely, yeah. And I that think is it's also sorry. No, no, I was going to say it's dead interesting, isn't it? Then then the, looking at race the race vest mentality where it is sort of you know it captures the the upper upper part of your torso and hugs into everything. I guess rather than any of that, it's yeah. And I was also reflecting on what yeah events that i did where yeah like the, the mds years ago and i i wore an arn arn rucksack which was the, the new zealand one and they they were one of the few things that had chest pouches on the front at the time okay. and this you know it was like god blimey 12 years ago now and then it's seeing the emergence of more and more packs and and race vests with stuff on the front so you can access it more easily like as opposed to like you describe having to take your pack off rustle around or contort yourself contort your arm up your back to try and yeah. get a snack out 
yeah he's, he's a de- yeah dead interesting piece of the design for me as well but yeah lo- loads on the website I'm, I'm getting lost in shopping as well while you're talking which is always uh, always the downside to these charts. It's, yeah ex- exactly it's, it's amazing he always um, does this every every time we have a podcast i know i know I, yeah <laughs> I, I do i do yeah get distracted by all the all the cool stuff i don't need kit well yeah we always need kit don't we but um, yeah. One thing that's really important to say, we've kind of touched on it with the rucksacks, that there's a, a men's and women's version of the same style. That is this, uh, true for all of the clothing as well. Um, yeah. There's like for like on, uh, on on every style. The veils, I think, are unisex. Am I correct there? Because they're size. They are unisex, yeah. yeah. Uh, they do come in a, in a smaller size. Um, yeah. But yes, they are a unisex. Yeah. Um, just because they're just a much more simpler design. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what's that? What's that? Sorry. What's the veil? The veil is the running the vest. Yeah. Right. OK. Sorry. Right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Is it um, worth touching on protection and waterproofs and explaining the difference between what you've mentioned, the Phantom and the Kinetic yeah. Ultra? Yeah. yeah. Um, two waterproofs in our range that are, are radically different. And this kind of highlights the different types of kit that you need, um, depending on weather and the style that, that you're going to do the route in. So I think if we focus on the Phantom first and explain what that's all about and where you would use it and really importantly, where you wouldn't use it. Um, so the Phantom Pull-On and the Phantom Pants are our lightest shell in the range. Um, so it's a two and a half layer uh, waterproof opposed to a three layer waterproof. Um, the difference between that is two and a half layer is much, much smaller but what you get with that is less durability compared to a three layer waterproof. That's just one of the payoffs. Um, the Phantom pull on weighs 89 grams, which is insane and packs away while smaller than my fist. I mean, it's half the size of my fist. It's incredibly breathable and it's highly waterproof, but for a certain duration. Um, and this is the bit that's really, really important. I wouldn't wear the Phantom pull on if I knew that the weather was going to be atrocious. It's not designed to wear for longer durations in really bad weather. It's designed to be in your pack and get out when you really need to use it. Um, Same with the pants to a degree, but the pants generally get a lot less hammer um, because you're not wearing a vest with it, uh, for example. So those would be for, I would say, for people who are going out on the route in spring, summer or maybe for the diehard runners who are going for the FKT, maybe, um, (laughs) who just want to go super, super light and really, really minimal. The other jacket is the Kinetic Ultra that Kathy mentioned. It's one of my favorites. Um, I run really, really, really hot. Um, So when I go running in bad weather, I need to wear a waterproof, but I need something that's going to protect me, but is something that's incredibly breathable. And that's exactly what the Kinetic Ultra achieves. It's not a spring, summer running jacket. It's a foul weather running jacket. So if you set off on this route and the weather, you know that the weather is going to be consistently bad. The Kinetic Ultra, it's a put on and leave on jacket. That The fabric's incredibly soft and really, really stretchy. So when you've got a vest on, which can be quite restrictive, a running vest, sorry, it can be quite restrictive on, on your apparel, that the stretch nature of that fabric makes it incredibly comfortable to run in where you're moving in quite a dynamic way. Um, And again, because I run really, really hot, the breathability of that fabric is really, really noticeable. So it's very rarely you're going to have to take it off to vent. Um, Obviously, you can just undo the zip to vent off if you need need to. Um, But what the Kinetic Ultra is going to give you compared to the Phantom is that additional durability where you can just wear it for hours and run and hopefully be comfortable for the day. And it's going to protect you from the elements. I think, Kathy, you mentioned it earlier. It's got more of a substantial hood, for example, compared to the Phantom. The Phantom's hood is very, very minimal. So it design- it's because it's designed to pack away incredibly small, where the Kinetic Ultra has those adif- additional features that allows you to go out in fair weather. If you're going fast hiking, the Kinetic Ultra really lends itself to that discipline as well, because that fabric is going to allow you to wear a heavier backpack um, over those longer durations. So you're not going to get a risk risk from sort of extended abrasion. 
and of course changeable weather the kinetic ultra without a doubt will be the jacket of choice for that as well yeah yeah and have they have they both got both got matching pants did you say earlier on they both are, are they, is there a trouser <laughs> trouser version of each of those yeah the phantom has it's got so we've got the phantom pants they weigh 79 grams and obviously they pack away even smaller than the jacket. So both of them together would be the size of my fist, um, which is it, it, it's absolutely tiny. Yeah. Really, really importantly for people who are doing uh, races, they do pass kit check because they're fully taped, fully waterproof. So if someone was looking for an ultralight waterproof set to do a sky race or, you know, even the fell running uh, community, they, they pass all the, the minimum kit, kit requirements. Um, so yeah, the kinetic ultra doesn't have a specific kinetic ultra pant, but we have kinetic pants and kinetic alpine pants, which are more designed for hiking and trekking and, you know, potentially summer alpine. There's absolutely no reasons why you couldn't wear a pair of those pants. I would say they're a bit too heavy to run in, but certainly fast hiking, trekking, the, the, the kinetic pants will be absolutely fine. In fact, they'll be really good if you're going out in the rain. We talked a lot about, about kit there, and uh, that, Kathy, you mentioned earlier on about environment, and we'll move. Yeah, that that area particularly, I guess, is 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 is, is there's some fairly specific stuff going on environmentally, isn't there? From a, I think there's some specific flora, flora and fauna going on. I always, get, <laughs> I, I, always I always forget which term is which applies to which going on in there and how yeah how, how how can we think about the environment or minimize our impact upon it is what is one of the questions that i think is, is is worth covering i think when we were talking at the beginning chris one of the key things we, we were aware of was that this is a, a permanent circuit um so people can just come and do it as and when they want and it's really important for us as a business and um, with our sustainability report, you know, we, we we understand that we're selling kit for people to get out and enjoy the outdoors. So really, we have a responsibility to make sure that the environment that we're using and the environment we love is still going to be there for our kids and, and uh, future generations. So I think it's also really important to understand that um, Snowdonia National Park is it's a working environment you know we, we call them national parks but all of our national parks are working environments people live there people work there the land is used by farmers to produce our food there's uh, local businesses that need support you know all year round to, to continue to flourish and, and keep those communities buoyant actually in in the land that you're um, traveling over on the on the mountain goat route circuit it's providing electricity for all of us which is uh, vital there's areas of unique and geological and human history so everything needs protecting so yes that's why we do ask everybody to follow the defined route which is either footpaths uh, or well, it's all it's all public access footpath and uh, just to make sure we don't have any uh, issues in uh, with, with various landowners just respecting their their rights as landowners really and um, and then yeah just bring your, your Strava into the shop for those that complete the route um, there is a very smart, I'll hold it up, Mountain Goat Circuit Zone badge. And uh, there's one of those for everybody that completes the route. We also have a leaderboard in the shop for people's details to be included if they so wish. Um, we're also building a website web page at the moment where um, a digital leaderboard will be uploaded as well if people want to put their Strava details on there too. We have on the website, if people want to get involved, um, there'll be all the information there on uh, how you can do so. There'll be information, permanent information in one of our shop windows at the Capel Keurig shop. There are paper maps of the route to buy if you so wish and proceeds from those will go to the Snowdonia Society to help with environmental protection. There is also a free GPX download available off of the blog page and um, that means you, you don't actually need to spend anything you can just go out and uh, and, and do your thing uh, just Enjoy. make sure yeah make sure you've got uh, you've checked the weather that's key <laughs> mm -hmm. you've got the uh, comfortable kit and just yeah just get out enjoy the I think I don't know for me Snowdonia is utterly unique you know it's just such a stunning environment there's there's everything there in 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 one small area but you do still get uh, on sections of this uh, a proper feeling of wilderness I think the what well, it was August actually 
when I did the stretch from Capelcuric to Clamberis, bearing in mind I went over Snowdon. So apart from the Hlwyth to section to the top of the Snowdon Ranger path, uh, outside of there, where I probably saw thousands of people, um, I saw four other people on that entire 22k section, I think that is, 22, 23k on that first day. So that, and that's, 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 you're going to be prepared to see nobody, I think, if, yeah, you, if you're awesome. going uh, out of season or, or in, in particularly gash weather. It was, it was, it was just wonderful <laughs> to, to, to have be alone with my thoughts and uh just pass through that little nub of people busy do you have a, summit do you have a favorite section kathy on the route well i think for me that section coming off of malkin and down into flamberis was lovely because it just brought back so many memories i lived there yeah. it was the first place i lived when i was sort of 16 i got my first job in uh flamberis so that it was it was very very evocative it was a, a very very um very much a trip down memory lane for me that whole route i know i'm gonna love the quarries because i just yeah. adore poking around in the quarries um but uh across the glitters um, i've got dark memories of the glitters from <laughs> From a Welsh 14's <laughs> attempt <laughs> oh. going across in the in absolutely horrendous conditions, just like fed up with ground that was broken, and I was just, just wanted to be on flat ground by that point. But uh yeah, that whole section coming down Kefni Capel into Capel Keurig, I've never done, so I'm really looking forward to that. And nice. I've been told great things about it. It's got a lot to live up to. <laughs> Yeah, so it does. It, well, again, you're back to my earlier distraction looking at the route. It looks like an awesome route and it's really yeah. like sparked enthusiasm for me thinking about whether, yeah, maybe fast packing is pushing the term a little bit for me, but but yeah, I'd love to give that a go. I think that the, you, you bri briefly mentioned at the beginning as well about using local accommodation providers and maybe, yes. so may, may, yeah, that, that I, I guess that's going to be something worth looking into doing that potentially and yeah, in, in I guess in two sections. Yeah, in staying over in Clonbury between between on the, between the two sections, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, you've got the historic Penigurid Hotel, full of Everest memorabilia from the the teams that trained there, and uh, Clonbury has got a, a host of different levels of accommodation from hostels through to mm. B and Bs, Airbnbs, and all sorts. Uh, and then there's yeah, you've got. Clamberis is where the last accommodation is really but uh, again en route you've got lots of food options as well you're coming down into Clamberis there's uh, some some super options there's bakeries there's you know there's uh, a cafe and um, pubs and things so um, there's lots of ways that you can uh, help the local economy and then in, in Capel itself uh, sadly, the Shabbat Cafe is, uh, is 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 no more currently. I don't know if, if another business is going to go in there. But uh, the Plaza Benin Bar is uh, excellent. And then the Tinicoe Pub, you know, you've, you've got all the uh, uh, old classic uh, pubs as well in Capel Keurig. Could turn into quite an indulgent run, couldn't it? Well, I mean, it, it was for me because I, I, I'm i not a fast runner. I, I, I fast packed, as I said, I didn't, didn't uh, want to Port injury on that particular occasion but uh, yeah for me I kind of started out from Capel it was dark um, there was one person swimming in uh, uh, the lake by Plaza Brennan with a little light little orange light was bobbing around and dawn broke as I got on to Mol Shabod um, and then coming down into Lamberis as I said I was kind of wandering down like god you know I started living in Clamberis in a caravan working as an assistant outdoor instructor and used to sort of spend quite a long time fawning over kit in the window of the Joe Brown shops <laughs> and I was just like <laughs> a bit weird you know I kind of walking down into Clamberis and walked into the shop um uh, absolutely jiggered and uh, very much looking forward to a brew kind of sitting in the shop thinking well, it's a bit weird this you know we've, we've Paul and I have owned the business for 20 years in Wales and uh where's that time gone <laughs> yeah wow so yeah it was massively indulgent <laughs> and hopefully you know lots of people have fantastic memories of Snowdonia and growing up there and, and days out and and to link you know that skyline yeah I'm I'm, I'm hoping people are going to be able to use the route to create their own lovely memories yeah um, i think that's the big thing for me it's um it's weaving all these old memories that i have together completely yeah. um you know outside when i lived um in nottingham i the peak district was my stomping ground 
and my dad used to take us to North Wales for the big adventures. So it has so many nice memories. And then, of course, my early years of the career, my, my career at RAB, working with your team, Cathy, yeah. um, those memories completely continued. And yeah, like I say, this route can link all those really cool memories together. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to getting on it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Rain, you need to set a date as well. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Ab- <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Definitely the feeling mountain. that way. Yeah. And get yeah, and getting me back 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 out on the fells again, on the mountains again. I think that back back to your point, Kathy. I think that you know, growing up in and around the Lake District, the, whenever I go down to Snowdonia, it's 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 it's. it's I don't know. It's it's a lot more aggressive. I think the mountains are a lot more aggressive, oh, and than the lakes, yeah. aren't they? And it, there's yeah. there's a lot more moody, atmospheric. I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. offending people with my terminology, but it no, it's definitely, definitely it feels so great. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, but amazing. That was part of the reason I was jiggered because I haven't actually been out yeah. on on proper, you know, Welsh terrain for that kind of length of time for yeah. a very long time, and my legs were just trashed when I uh, when I got down to the shop. I had to go and have a humongous <coughs> <laughs> I had to, I like that. and like you said yeah there's a lot of up and down as well isn't there and that's yeah, the, that's the thing same. is yeah 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 yeah, yeah I mean some, you've got some, about 3,800 yeah. 3, meters of ascent um what's uh um Mont Blanc is just over 4,000 isn't it and uh so you've, you've got a, that's that's an alpine day in your legs you know I, yeah, whichever yeah. way you look around about it and and on literally you've got craggy terrain you've got grassy terrain you've got hummocky terrain you've got yeah. a very very nice section of bog as well um <laughs> it's, it's all going on you this late you know it's yeah. uh, underfoot your, your feet aren't going to be bored <laughs> yeah, yeah. maybe next year then I'm, uh, my my swim training isn't going to help that at all is it? Yeah, 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 yeah 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 and is it yeah so wrapping wrapping up is there anything else that we wanted to sort of talk talk about on it is there anything over oh, have we have we done a good job of talking it through I think we've covered everything I had on my list um but I think it's also really important to say um a very big thank you to Rab um who have um supported us with with getting everything together it's been very much a team effort um even though it it'll be you know running out of the shops Rab have been absolutely critical in, in getting the whole ball rolling and, and putting in a huge amount of work as well I mean creating and, and and bringing this circuit into being so um so we're very grateful for our uh relationship with Rab and I think when people see uh, see the film they'll get a real feel for uh for, for how special a place Nodonia is and how much we all we all love it yeah no no they say thank you guys for the opportunity um to trying to inspire as many people to get out in the hills in, in in whichever way they want and here's a route a challenge for absolutely everybody and and that's that's the main idea behind it so yeah it's great to work together on it thank you Kathy you can find very shortly more information about uh, how to get involved with the mountain goat circuit on our blog page and that's available at www.joe-brown.com just uh, go to the bottom of the page and click on latest news blog for the full range of our wonderful wonderful rab equipment we have uh, in our shops everything from running through to walking, backpacking and expedition equipment. Um, you can visit our web shop at www.climbers-shop.com. And there's also a wealth of information on equipment, equipment knowledge, um, skills and tips, particularly on navigation on our sister website, uh, which is www.joebrownoutdooracademy.com. <laughs>